zero people but one thumbs up. I don't know how that works. Hello, Wolf Martin. How are you? Yo, Michael. Jason Webb, what's up, man? Double tap and hillbilly. Shalom, brother. Music tube. Shalom. KC and more. Lucas. Dusty. Anna Attire. Alexis. Hola. Kingdom Warrior. Nicole. Susan. Dustin. Shalom, y'all. Jacqueline. What's going on? Papa. Frank Burns. Two cents. Josh. <laughs> Mike Bragnaccio. Chris, Tony, Patriot, Shalom, Patriot family. Hey, y'all. I just wanted to say hi. What does Shalom mean? It's uh, it's like aloha, but for Hebrews. It means peace. Warbeard. <laughs> That's a great name. Wisconsin. Susan, Shalom. Wasabi from 305. Nice. Come by. It's the plural of compass. See. Hey, Mark Chase. Shalom, brother. Aaron from Ohio. We have so many people in Ohio. Greetings from Georgia. I have family there. <laughs> Wes S. Shalom, brother. Glad to see you made it out of the wilderness, bro. Good stuff. Need to trim my beard. Uh. Shalom from Savannah. Like Savannah, Georgia. Wisconsin. Shalom, sister. Northeast Ohio here, North Mississippi, Oregon. Man, you guys are cray cray. Alfred Nard Tribesman, what's up, brother? Southern Cali, Tom, Nick, the whole nine. Tribesman, I was just uh, I was just shooting a video for you. Um, your question on lessons from the uh, Great Depression and phenomenal. It went long, but I thought it was a really good video. It's gonna it's going to post in the near future. I was eaten by a cougar, but she got indigestion, and here I am. That's awesome, man. Can you shout out to Patriot Yachtman? Shalom, Patriot Yachtman. Good to see you. There's literal pollen raining from the sky on me right now. Homestead is good, man. Covington, Georgia. Roger that. <laughs> Shalom, William. Pennsylvania. Eric's channel, Shalom. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hey, man. He is risen indeed. Um, Texas in the house, black rain arms. It's not that I don't like Pennsylvania. I just think that the population density equation in eastern Pennsylvania can be troublesome when everybody who lives on the east coast has nowhere to go but west. Frank Tactical, great name. Mason Williams, we got a hundred people. Love it. Yeah, see, Papa Neil knows the deal. All right, he knows the deal. We hit a hundred, we start talking. What are we gonna talk about? Sean Robinson, EH Nebraska, howdy, howdy, brother. We just did a bunch of Patreon videos, me and my wife. Yours was one of them. So, yeah, Stephen is rocking. Uh, I was gonna say, sounds pretty bad. Steven's in my other pants. <laughs> Take that for what it is. Um, what's on y'all's minds? Yeah, uh, Dio, we got a 118, it shows on my end. 119. In laws in the county law, household five. That's awesome. Yeah, it does seem like that. Uh, as far as the border goes, that's not going to last for too long. Anything that's going to throw egg on the face of the federal government, they're not going to allow to go unchallenged for any length of time, especially something as sensitive as the border. Um, those guys that are down there doing their thing, bless them for doing it. It ain't going to last. Yeah, we had, uh, we had a great Passover, and we are uh, neck deep in unleavened bread right now and loving it. Um, Chris Hammond, yeah, I have a video coming out on that, but yeah, I'll tell you what I do. So my exercise regimen is this. Um, I get up in the morning about 5 a.m. From 5 to 6 is my time. And then from 6 to about 6.45. And by my time, I mean it's me and the father. Thank you, Gene. Um, and so from 5 to 6, it's me and the father. And then from 6 to about 6.45, I do calisthenics. And then so on day one of calisthenics is going to be like push-ups, leg lifts, crunches, and dips. And then, um, thank you, Erin. And uh, on day two, 
is uh, planks and bicycle crunches and um, squats and then chin-ups. And then at 6.45, my kids go out the door to get on a school bus and I go out the door. And then I have two different ruck weights. I have a day pack and a ruck sack. And so on day one, I ruck and with an actual rucksack, a 60 and a half pound ruck and a rifle. And I do 2.4 miles and I try and I do it for time. If I get under 30 minutes, I feel good. Then on day two, I do my plate carrier and a uh, 48 pound uh, pack and my rifle. And if I do under 30 minutes, I'm doing good. So, and then as far as eating, I do intermittent fasting. My first meal of the day is at 12 noon. And um, Jason, let's, we'll talk about that next. Um, I start eating at 12 noon and I try my first meal of the day to be um, very low glycemic impact. So um, try and survive, shalom brother. Um, we gotta hang out again, man. What's up, what's up? Got to go, phone is possessed, shalom brother. Um, Roger that, Alexis. Um, so my first meal of the day is protein, man. I try not to do carbs because carbs drop my, um, my metabolism into neutral. Like I'm not, I'm not old, but I'm not a young man anymore either. And then so I eat from noon till about seven o'clock. Blessings on you and your family, Joseph. And then uh, I try and be done with eating by six, but usually it's you know between six and seven I have my last meal. And so I'm keeping my, um, my metabolism is, is way up, you know, because uh, body weight calisthenics get, um, give you a good afterburn, right? You're burning, your body is trying to replace the depleted oxygen that you used up for up to 38 hours after with strength training. Then you combine that with cardio under load, that's good stuff. And then you limit the number of calories that you take in. I try not to eat trash and you limit the window of time that you're eating calories, all those things work in your favor. And so what I'm seeing right now is about two pounds per week and it's sustainable. It's not, it's not Atkins level, right? So yeah, thanks Tommy. Um, uh, no, I haven't, I don't check out anybody's Facebook page cause I don't own Facebook. And then uh, somebody asked the weight of my kits. So my rucksack, is, you know, depending on what I'm running, I've got about a 50 pound pack and about a 60 pound pack. No, you should, that's fine. Onion rings are cool, man. I love onion rings. My plate carrier with the day pack is 38 pounds. My chest rig set up the way it is. Uh, you're doing the 24. That's awesome, man. From 303 to 270. Dude, that's, yeah, I'm telling you. I was, uh, I was super fat. Um, I was at 334 and I'm about 290 right now. So it's about 44 pounds since, um, you know, November-ish sustainable. So, and my fighting weight's 265. So like at 265, I'm a brick house, <laughs> but, uh, at 335, I'm not. So and at 290-ish, I'm still not. I'm still, I'm on the road, right? So you just stay on, stay on the road. Um, so how much does my kit weigh? You figure... Y'all hear that? Okay, yeah, I thought somebody was in the woods whistling at me. Something's gonna get shot. NWA Prepper, shalom, man. How do you know, Wes? How do you know? Maybe I'm allergic to birds. Steven calling you from your other pants. <laughs> Roger that. Um, so figure eight to 10 pounds for a rifle. My chest rig's 22 pounds. Plate carrier's 38 pounds with a day pack. And then uh, anywhere between 50 and 60 pounds for uh, a ruck. 
White printed sparrow, midnight hiker. Roger that. It's going to be a red printed sparrow. It keeps that up. <laughs> yeah, listen, come to my pause, work green three. Uh, come in from the southeast, move to grandma's house in a wide arc. Yes, I do wear back plates. Um, yes, I wear back plates. I don't run side plates, though. Maybe it's a new code from wifey. Small town preparedness. I'm good. How are you? My wife and I would like to spend a sab with you and possibly Joe Fox when we head your way to see the next total eclipse in five years. Brother, if I'm still here in five years, let's set it up. <laughs> Where is it, Patrick Smith? What's going on? Oh, my. Oh, my God. Oh, just kidding. What exactly is the point behind carrying chem lights when on a mission? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Um, you know what? Hold on. We're going to pause for a minute. Let's talk about possible uses for chem lights. If you're clearing rooms, a very easy way to identify that the room has been cleared is then when everybody, and whenever you're done clearing that room is you crack a, a, a chem light, throw it on the floor, and then anybody else that comes by that room knows that that room has been cleared. Uh, another thing that you can use them for, if you have IR chem lights, is for IFF, identification friend or foe. Uh, you can use them also IR chem lights for signaling to aircraft or other elements that we'll say are in an overwatch position or things such as that. Uh, they're also useful for light if you need them for light. There's lots of things that they're useful for. Um, so depending on the specifics of your mission, I mean, I'm, I'm totally okay. I run chem lights in my kits. I like having a couple of them around for lots of different things. Um, if I need to mark a target, like maybe I have an IR chem light, okay? And I duct tape it to the bumper of a vehicle and only us with nods that we can see it. Well, what vehicle is it? It's the one with the freaking chem light on the bumper. Okay, you know, things like that. They, for identifying things and for illumination, lots of uses. Okay, I'm gonna turn comments back on. Live chat, there we go. Southwest Idaho. Yeah, they're one use tools. <laughs> they don't work after you use them. I want to move in. I'll be a hired homestead hand. We'll work for food. We'll see about that. What do you think about the peace deal? They're ready to sign. Revelation, Third Temple. Um, I'll believe it when I see it. I've said many a time, my canary in the coal mine is the two witnesses preaching uninterrupted for 1,260 days from the Temple Mount. I see that, and then I'm like, okay, yep, we're there. Here we are. Here's my thing, though, and I mean this with all love, okay? Um, Travis says, no problem, man. Um, let's get some fire extinguishers in our kitchens. Let's get our first aid kit. Let's, you know, make sure we have some food. Zero our rifle. Let's do those things. Um, you know, let's commoditize some things. Shalom, Alberto. Uh, you know, let's know how to keep the old ways. It, it's like there's things that we can affect change on, things that we can't. I don't have two acres for you, Alexis. I don't have two acres for anybody right now. Uh, but there's lots of small plots available in my area. Um, so let, let's focus on the things that we can affect positive change on now. And then if the two witnesses preach uninterrupted for three and a half years, I'll go, oh, crap, here we are. And I will literally just keep doing the things that we're already doing. Um, perhaps. Yeah, no one controls the timeline. Yeah, I think all we can do is take educated guesses at it. Um, Magnum1776. Yes, I do think it's possible that if Trump gets reelected in 2020, that um, there will be violence in the streets from the libtards. However, I also think it's possible that if he doesn't get reelected in 2020, there will eventually be violence in the street from the conservatives. And I think that if he doesn't get something done on the southern border, he's not going to get reelected. Um, hey, Barry, do you think the end of the live stream you could say a prayer? Thank you. Probably. Let's see what time it is. Any pollution issues in your area? No, not currently. Um, Yeah, Daryl, I agree. 
Think of getting an AR pistol, which is a good and ex inexpensive option. I've been very pleasantly surprised by anything from a Palmetto State Armory. Their Patriot rifles are really tight, and they shoot better than most people are capable of shooting. So, yeah, PSA, exactly. Um, yeah. Make sure if you're buying an AR pistol that you're pressing it into service in a role that makes sense. Thermal versus night vision if price ain't a thing. Um, it's kind of a trick question. If price ain't a thing, get both. What are you drinking on, Bear? This is a local red wine um, from the Post Winery, which is in Arkansas. Will I get back to you, the plot? I do not have two acres for you, Alexis. Thank you, Free Spirit Press News. How's the homestead going? Uh, Mama tried homestead. It's going good. Um, it's going good. Um, you know, it's springtime, so we're doing everything at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, it's going good. Things are, everything's turning green. I'm, uh, I'm very much so right now being impatient. I want the, uh, I want everything to grow in my garden, right? Um, any opinion on Missouri trying to ban federal gun laws? I think they should do it. I think they should become the pilot case for every other state in the nation. Um, yeah. I think they should do it. You guys know me in politics. I don't pay too close attention to anything, really as far as politics go, um, especially in the federal level. State level, I'm more interested in, but I think it's all one big game anyway. We have built a huge greenhouse the last couple of days. A lot of your lingo has stuck. That's phenomenal. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad. We, a greenhouse is something we want to do this year on property. We just have so many things. Although we did just post a video on Patreon. It was like uh, the Homestead Year in Review, and... Um, if you look back in a year, we accomplished a hell of a lot of stuff around here. Dog and pony show. Amen. None of my land is for sale. Um, and there, but there is lots of land around me that is for sale. Um, just look in Eastern Oklahoma. Sheepdog, Shalom. Active local militia here in my town. Joseph, I will. Um, if I'm out that way, I will. I agree, tribesmen. Um, yeah, greenhouses are mostly because of the conversations you and I have, brother, are, are on my mind and on my heart, and I want to be doing that. Gray Scout, roger that. Yeah. Um, how much land do you homestead? That's a great question. We have a, a little over 21 acres here. Uh, Aaron Sarka, you should get a Glock 19. I've just got into guns. I bought my first gun at 22, but what pistol should I get starting out? You should get a Glock 19 because it's like the most common handgun on the planet. It chambers nine millimeter, 80% of all handguns are chambered in nine millimeter. It's a NATO round and a Warsaw packed round, meaning the entire planet uses it. So you can find it all over the place. It's like, like every accessory on the planet has been made for the glock 19 the mags are ready, readily available all the aftermarket parts are readily available all the things it does all the things and it's small enough that most women can shoot it without a problem and it's big enough that most men can hold it without a problem it's just kind of the best first gun so um because the 19 is more concealable, that if you want to use it for home defense, you can. If you want to put a light on it, it's got a rail for it, you can. If you want to carry it, you can. I do like the uh, 17 because it has a longer sight radius, but for a woman, her name's Erin, I'm assuming that she's a woman, I think the 19 would be better for her. So, you're welcome, Erin. <laughs> Benelli M4. Daisy, I don't have a problem with it, but I don't love Berettas. Unlike Wes, who carries a 14-pound handgun into the woods, I don't love Berettas. Um, the Beretta 92, I think, is a really nice gun. 
and I think it can be very accurate. <laughs> Shut up, Travis. Um, but uh, I, I wouldn't carry it. And I found Beretta triggers, if they don't have a trigger job, they can be a little eh. And then if they do have a trigger job, one of the only accidental discharges I've ever had was on a Beretta with a trigger job. It just like, literally you breathe on it and then the thing fired. Um, <laughs> I get it, Wes, I get it. Sig P320, I haven't shot it and I don't have an opinion on it. Um, HK Mark 23, yeah, it's, it's a big gun. Um, yeah, Leslie, I like tobacco for SHTF money. Uh, one of the things that we were just talking about inside was uh, Harmony's grandmother, grandma, her daddy survived and thrived during the Great Depression. And one of the things he was talking about was nobody had any money. So everything was buy, sell, trade. Like it was all barter. And uh, you did what you could do. So I, I'm a big proponent of Lester. <laughs> What's up, Lester? Uh, shalom, brother. Um, yeah, if you get pistol whipped with a Beretta, that's a whole nother thing. So, yeah, I will speak a little bit about medical. Um, tobacco is a really good commodity to have. I've tried growing it. I've just had the worst luck. I've planted, I think, 14,000 tobacco seeds in my day. I've only got two viable plants, and they both died before they were 18 inches tall. So... Tobacco is very region specific. Um, so if you can grow it, do it. If you can stockpile it, stockpile it. Um, I don't use tobacco anymore, but I'm telling you, it was one of the hardest things in my life. Um, it was way harder for me to quit chewing snuff than it was for me to stop smoking, than it was for me to stop you know, drinking heavily, than it was for me to stop doing coke. Like doing all of that was way easier than quitting snuff. Um, what do I do? I'm 62 and disabled and have no one. Start finding people, ma'am. Just find people. Fall in love with people. Find some people. T triple C for medical. Yeah, that's a good place to start. I would take a basic. Uh, get sheep, bro. <laughs> Canadian, get sheep. Please get sheep. Tactical alpaca response teams are much better than sheep, but get sheep. They're too easy. Prices of the land around me. Just look, look up eastern Oklahoma. Land prices. They're, they're extremely reasonable. You know, a couple grand, if, if that, an acre. T triple C for medical. Yes, but I'd get a basic foundation first. I mean, I've got, I've actually got a bare minimum on my belt right now. Imagine that. I mean, who'd have thought, right? And so having the things, right? Goats are a pain in the donkey. Yeah, they are. There's some gloves. Tennessee is good tobacco growing land. Yep. Um, so T triple C medical. Yeah, for sure. Pressure dressing, gloves, compressed gauze. Scott Brooks, what's going on, homeboy? And then I've got some shears and a tourniquet on me. And then I've got, uh, <laughs> One single 5.56 five, round that I put in there. I don't remember why. And uh, triangle bandage. Hello, MI prepper. So, anyway, T triple C, care under fire, all of that is really good stuff. Um, so, you should absolutely learn how to do that stuff. But I would get your basic primer and basic first aid, and then, um, yeah, so I can bite the bullet. Um, 045, 0445 workout tomorrow. Roger that. Um, you should know how to use a tourniquet. You should know how to use, you know, dress a wound and how to do all those things. T triple C training. A lot of it's very physical too. So, uh, as it should be because it's care under fire. Right. And so in that situation says me, the first thing you want to do is establish firepower superiority. So you need to be able to move and you need to be able to shoot if you're going to do a good T triple C class. Uh, but that being said, they're a blast. Like they're a lot of fun. Um, and you're going to learn some things that you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't learn anywhere else. You're welcome. So but yeah, basic medical, you know, and I, I get this question all the time, you know, what do I, uh, 
you know, what, what do I need to stock for medical? If you had a bucket full of gloves, a bucket full of tape, and a bucket full of gauze, you'd be way ahead. Way ahead, okay? So, <laughs> medicinal herbs to grow. That's a question for my wife. You can go check out Hami Biscuits, H-O-M-M-Y. She, uh, she has all that stuff on her channel. She knows all of those things. I am not versed in that. Dude EpiPen, shalom brother, good to see you, Michael Harris. Try and surviving, bro, we have, uh, Gene, you shouldn't have done that. Um, we have people here who, for whatever reason, make it their business to show up and hate on my channel. So, and then somebody said something about tourniquet. Yeah, here's one. So. Thoughts on using cheap tourniquets for practice and save quality ones for real. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I think you're better off just getting a trainer. Just get a trainer. So that's what I would do. I mean, ain't got time to bleed. I'll do that. Yeah, I like the NWA Prepper too. He's a good guy. I do a little bit of business with him. We, we share some life together, you know? We do the things. Detroit, Michigan, shalom. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Yeah, he is a good guy. He's a damn good guy, actually. Geralia Michaelison. That is a name. Thank you. The Israeli bandages many called also serves as an emergency tourniquet as well if you have one. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Shotgun, question mark. Yes, exclamation point. Love the shoddy. What's up, Monster Bear 87? And Lucid Varg? I like that. As in like Varg Vikernus? Are we gonna we're we gonna listen to some mayhem coming up here? How about some buried by time and dust by May or covered by 1349 originally by Mayhem? Yeah, that's a good one. As in Wolf, Roger that. Favorite pump versus semi. May, my favorite shotgun is the Mossberg 500, but uh, I'll take a 590 if I can get my hands on it. I got nothing wrong with the 870. I got nothing wrong with semis. Those Charles Daly semis you can buy at Walmart for like 300 bucks, those things will chug, dude. Um, they'll chug. Dude, what's up with the content from the thing? It's coming on Patreon, brother. It's coming. It's already been scheduled for Patreon. If you're not on there, shoot me an email and I'll send you all the links. Ithaca 37, dude. My dad had a pair of Ithaca Sweet 16s that were phenomenal. 1187, yep. Hello, Sean the Farmer. 590A1, yep. Yep. Yeah, you guys, you want to see a skilled drummer, uh, you should check out um, Frost from Satyricon or Trim from Emperor. Yeah, Willie Kazoo, shalom, brother. Vepper 12, mm-hmm. Better not hate nobody. Your heart must be light as a feather. I don't hate anybody, homie. 870 failed me a few times in the field, never on 500. Yeah, I like the 500. I've never had a, well, I say never, Nothing, no critical failures come to mind on the 500. Do you like the SR15? As in the Ruger SR15? Dave Lombardo from Slayer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know H&R made a pump. I have an H&R brake barrel. Terry Shoemaker, yeah, I like that scriptures quite a bit. Would you replace the sights on a, on a Glock 19? Um... If you can, short answer, no. Short answer, I want you to be able to hit with the sights that came on it. If you're gonna run a can or use it at night, then yeah, we can have a conversation about replacing the sights, but you ought to be able to hit with it stock. Um, and the reason I say that is a lot of people trick their guns out so that they can hit with it when they don't have good fundamentals. And that's you putting lipstick on a pig. So I would get your fundamentals squared away and be able to hit with the gun as it comes out of the box. 
And then, if you wanna run a can and you need higher sights, sure. Or you wanna shoot it at night, uh, sure. Um, so, H&R pump, copy. I had no idea. What I have next to me every now, get Joel Werner. Thanks, Grow Mechanic. If you rack using the rear sight, I don't. So, uh, you could get some high knees. Pesach was phenomenal. Thank you for asking. Good night, little wing. Uh, somebody, I think it was Scott Brooks, said, uh, um, Mike Mangini, that guy can play some drums, yo. You got a 12 gallon 1100. Holy cow. Not one more inch. What range and accuracy level would you classify as proficient? That's a great question. Here, I'm going to pause comments for a minute. Um, with a pistol at 15 meters, I want you to be able to hit a pie plate as fast as you can pull the trigger every time and then reload, rack the slide, and do it again every time. If you can put all your rounds inside of this, a 10 inch circle at 15 meters, bang, 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 you're there, you're there. And that's static, that's standing still, right? And then move out from there in dynamic shooting. You know, and being able to, you know, whoa, the bench came off the ground, shoot from cover, move around, do all those things. Um, but purely static, 15 meters with a handgun into a 10 inch pie plate, yep. Uh, I like 50 meters uh, as a basic proficiency with a carbine and then push it out to 100. And with a decent rifle and a decent shooter and decent ammunition, minute of pie plate, pie plate is very attainable at 100 meters. And then you get into long guns, you should be able to hit that pie plate at 300 meters without trying. Most weapons platforms are way more accurate than the people behind them. The shotgun, 25 meters, the same thing. You should be wrecking that pie plate over and over and over again. Um, and then learn to shoot and move at the same time. Shoot, move, communicate. Like working as a team. It's one thing when everybody's on the line, when you guys are all, if you're looking, uh, looking down on top of a, a battlefield, you got four guys and they're all in line. And you're all advancing, so the target's down here, and you're all advancing like this, that's okay. Very little issue of a stray round getting you, but if you got one guy that's back here, now we're dealing with trust issues. Can this guy actually shoot? Or this guy's back here. Can these guys, or we get jacked up and we're all like this. Okay, can they shoot? Yeah, they better be able to, but they also, everybody needs to get online again, right? And so, Basic proficiency, standing still. Then you work on you being able to move and accomplish the same standards. And then from there, you and your team moving together. And then simple things like mag changes. We shouldn't all run dry at the same time. That's gonna be bad. Um, so you want to stagger your shot cadence as well. That's a whole thing for a whole nother, whole nother time. But basic proficiency, I like 15 with a handgun, 25 with a shotgun, and 50 as a minimum with a carbine and then 300 with a long gun. If you're, if you're shooting a sniper rifle, you ought to be able to hit a pie plate at 300 meters. You, you should be able to put three rounds touching at 300 meters. But most people, again, most people, that's not gonna happen. All right, back to the comments, live chat. Who's, whoa, whoa, whoa. Aaron Sarka, is drinking alcohol against biblical belief? My pastor tells me that drinking is against the Bible, but I know other Christians are devout, but also drinks. What do you say? Okay, well, here we go. There is wine in my cup right now, uh, and I believe I'm a very devout Christian. The first miracle that was ever performed by Yeshua Messiah was he turned water into wine, and the Bible's not against drinking. It's against drunkenness, okay? So... Drinking's fine. Drunkenness is not okay. And so if you wake up and you need a drink, you have a problem. If you drink seven days a week, you have a problem. If you drink more than you know you should be doing, uh, you have a problem. So, 
Yeah. Drinking's okay. Drunkenness is not okay. So that's it. Yeah, exactly. Texas Pete, what's going on? No, optimum performance. You're just a normal human being. That's not a problem. Shalom, Kyle Cush. Thank you, brother. Good to see you. I appreciate that very much. So. There be something in them there woods. Plate carry, 6'4", long torso. Coverage feels limited mid-sternum to belly button. Uh, your plate should be riding higher than mid-sternum, brother. I'd go higher than that. Um, yeah, and that's normal. Uh, that's normal. You're trying to protect your lungs and your heart, not everything else that's in there. You're trying to protect your lungs and your heart. So if you were a shorter guy, you'd have more covered up, but as a bare minimum... Um, As a bare minimum, lungs and heart. Bare minimum. Jesus is awesome. Sternal notch. Hey, yep, agreed. Heart and lungs. Agreed. What are you, like some kind of awesome paramedic or something? You know these things? You do the things? Whoa, bro. That is a beautiful sky over there. You'll see that. And tilt. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Chupacabra. Probably. It's probably what it is. It's probably a chupacabra. But we have hollow points. <laughs> Beautiferous. That's a good word. Yeah, the father is amazing. What state do you resi reside in? I'm in Oklahoma, but I prefer to call it Arkla Texahomas because I'm where Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas all kind of date each other. So, question about rucks. What's up, Prepping in Progress? Hey, you guys should really go check out Prepping in Progress, by the way. Any suggestion for women? Anyone? Miss Kim is having trouble finding one geared for her body type. Um, I've had good luck with 5'11 for women because of the yoke style. And they're a little bit narrower. And I find the waist belt sits higher. So for a shorter torso, that's worked well for me. And in fact, if you want to try one the next time you're here, let me know. Because i got a couple that you could try out. Um... Yeah, it's, it's difficult. You might also call brother Cody from Sojourner and he'll measure you and make one to fit her body. I think was, uh, another person from our mag is having that exact thing done because they're having issues with their existing pack as well. So um, for sure that. LA gear. See, I haven't tried the LA gear ones. How are they? Main cable logger. Shalom, cable logger. Ten bucks. Gold penny, one. Thank you. Shalom, brother. Appreciate that. Infidel body armor may be able to help. I live in Hooker. I'm sorry. Recommendation for Bible version for starters. I just get the scriptures, man. Um, that's what I would get. And then I would start at our Shabbat playlist in Genesis 1 and just read along. Um, that's what I would do. The scriptures, ISR research. Bulletproof, everyone makes a handgun bulletproof jackets. Mm-hmm. What kind of food to store in the car? Snacks that you eat. Nathan, I get it on the bulletproof, everyone. Copy. Brennan, what are you doing here? Good to see you, brother. When are you coming back to visit? And I expect an answer on the live stream right now. When are you coming back to visit? Gunshots two blocks over. Roger that, Rachel. Armor up. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, I miss you too. Get up here. Let's do the things. Thank you, Big Mama Matriarch. Yeah, she's phenomenal. I love her. Yeah, Chris, come on over. All 263, you guys. Uh, how do I feel about armor and backpacks for kids at school? I feel like there's probably, hypothetically speaking, uh, soft armor in my kids' backpacks right now. How's that? Uh, yeah, talk to Cody. Set it up, man. He, you guys have my numbers. And just, just come. Just pick a weekend and tell me when you're coming here. Come up. We'll hang out. We'll do the Shabbat thing. We'll do the cooking food thing. We'll do the beer thing. It'd be tremendous. Uh, yeah, you guys need to come back up. We need to stand in that hay field again and look at the sky. So, yeah, man. Have I ever made it to the Tyler, Texas area? I don't know. I mean, why is it that you guys have two barbecue joints right downtown there? And, uh, yeah, all those tall pines over there. And what's that lake called? Um, that that uh, Christian camp that's out there that does the things. The Atomic Jew, Michael Oppenheimer. Bless you, brother. Thank you. Michael McLaughlin, man. Read along. It's all good, homie. What's the best sight for the AR-15? Man, what are you trying to do with it? You're trying to shoot 500 with open sights or you're trying to hit a man-sized target at 50? How much to join a meet and greet there? Um, I don't know. Oh, will you, David, version two? Sick, we even have to think about arming our kids at school. I know. Uh, uh, my kids also have IFACs on them and know how to use them. So they know how to apply tourniquets. They know how to use pressure dressings. Uh, yeah, good point, Scott Brooks. Where can I land my bush plane to come see you? I would land it outside the range of my 20 millimeter. Just saying. Hey, Brenda. Shalom, sister. Um, we got a technical out here. It's an F-550 with a four barrel 20 mil belt fed. You should see this thing. I had that crop duster guy kept getting up in my business. Not anymore. It took three days for the wreck to quit smoldering, but no more problems. So, Diddy, congratulations, Ethan. I'm glad to hear that. Tell him I said shalom. Six foot, 180 pounds, mop C fits real good. I bet you got it. I bet that cummerbund's a little bit tighter on you than it is on me. <laughs> Mm. What else we got going on? It's 8 o'clock already. Aim point, red dots. Buy once, cry once. Holosun's pretty good, too. Dude, the, the thing, though, is you don't have to look for it. Policing that 20 mil is, is easy. It's like you can see it from a half a mile away. Copy that, Alexis. How many rifle mags do you carry in full kit? 10 plus one. 10 plus one. Although that's, that's because I'm me. And so I don't, uh, oh, it's an F550, Robert, not an F150. I would never do that with a 150. I barely, I don't even put the 50 cal on the, uh, on the F150. Primary arms, ACSS reticle. Shabbat 45. <laughs> Roger that. Thank you for the $2. I don't know if you want me to talk about it or not, but I don't know. Um, I don't recommend that everybody carry 10 plus 1. My wife doesn't run 10 plus 1. She runs 6 plus 1. You are Scott Peters Jr. I'm ashamed of you. How dare you show up late like this again? What's wrong with you? Call your mother. Just kidding. Hey, from not Ohio. Brock Nasty is also late. 50 BMG uses. It's a really good way to poke holes in things that need holes in them. And uh, on top of all of that, you know, sometimes the ATF might get called on you. Yeah, 6 plus 1 is a great place to be, NWA Prepper. That's kind of my baseline. But me being me, I'll take four more pounds of, of weight for 120 more rounds. And I just, I want them. Working in Tennessee, single stick hero, roger that. Jonathan Kozad, 
Kozad? Kozad? Shalom, brother. Should a six gun be my sidearm and SHTF? Well, that depends on what your population density is. Out here, sure, that's fine. In the middle of Babylon, no, you need more rounds than that. Although there are a couple of redeeming qualities of revolvers, one of which being that you can press it up against a soft target and pull the trigger and not have to worry about a malfunction. And the wound channel is disgusting slash excellent, depending on what you're into. Um, you know, everybody touts the dependability of a wheel gun. But remember, Jerry Mikulek had to replace his firing pin when he was trying to set the world record with that 357. So, I got nothing against LWRC. Hey, Logan. Thank you, Jonathan. Shalom. Sean, you're welcome, man. Adam Martin, I'm disappointed in you. I'm disappointed in you, Adam Martin. Beat face. Give me 20. Let's go. Come on. We're waiting. Up, down, up, one. Up, down, up, two. Come on. What is the best food in buckets for kids? <laughs> uh, you know what? Let's talk about that. I want to talk about that for a minute. Best round in, or best food in buckets for kids. Okay. I'm going to hide chat for a minute. Here's why. I'm very much so a proponent of stocking what you eat. I also just spent dinner at grandma's house, hanging out with grandma and my wife and my kids and listening to grandma talked about, talk about what it was like being raised by people who had just survived the Great Depression. There was one winter, one winter, like four months, that all they ate were black-eyed peas. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, black-eyed peas. And so, we oftentimes worry about food boredom. What are we gonna do about it? Food boredom is a real thing, and it is. And for that reason, you should stock food that will keep on a shelf indefinitely, that you eat regularly, and that that won't keep indefinitely, you should rotate out. You should have a working prepper pantry, probably 15 to 18 months worth of food on the shelves, and you just rotate it in and out. But for four months, they ate 120 meals, give or take. Well, no, because four months would be 120 days, 360 meals of black-eyed peas because it's all they had. Nobody starved to death. Nobody cared that the kids didn't want black-eyed peas anymore. Truthfully, they probably got their tails beat if they didn't eat. Uh, and again, I just shot this video about... Um, Lessons from the Great Depression, and that's one of them. You eat the food that you're given with a smile on your face. And so my kids can oftentimes be picky eaters. We don't tolerate that around here. You're thankful for the food that you have and you eat it. And in fact, Cheyenne, as an example, was giving me a hard time one night about eating the dinner that I had prepared for her. And so as a punishment, I rewound her timeline 200 years, and I put her back in the 1800s. I went back to the electrical panel, cut the main breaker, turned the AC off, the whole nine, lit one candle, set it in the middle of the table, and I said, there, you sit there and eat your dinner in the dark now. And then when you're done, you can comb your hair and go to bed like a nice little blonde girl would have 200 years ago. And she cried, but she ate her dinner in the candlelight alone because everybody else had finished their dinner. And so on the one hand, yes, kids can be picky eaters. Humans can be picky eaters. So stock what you eat and eat what you stock. On the other hand, if one of my kids ever turned their nose up at a meal and we were in crisis, and I'm saying this, fresh on coming back from Florida and then going back to Florida in a few weeks, if one of my kids ever turned their nose up at a meal when we were in dire need of it, Lord help them, they wouldn't be able to sit down for a week because I'm gonna tear that butt up. So grandma is here amongst the living because she ate 360 meals straight of black-eyed peas, boiled black-eyed peas, because that's all they had. So 
it's not either or, it's both. And the more you do of the one, the more food you stock that your kids like, the less you have to do of the other. But you do need to be willing to harden up and go there. If things get hard, you need to be at least as hard as the challenges, preferably harder than it. And I think we do a disservice to our children. At least I'll say in my household, I feel that we do a disservice to our children if we allow them to be soft when there's an opportunity for them to learn how to harden up. So, all right, chat back on. Who's dropping bombs here? Frank Tactical. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Adam Martin. Thank you, brother. Bless you. Tabernacle. I know someone who's now 97 years old during the Depression. He said all they had was beans. Yep. Amen, try and surviving. These mosquitoes don't care about this natural bug spray. This lemon eucalyptus, they're like, that's cute. Where's the deet, bro? Do you have predator animals in those woods? Yep, at least one bear. No. Um... I found some bobcat droppings, not a lot. We have uh, a, a fair amount of coyotes. Super Steve, yes. Um, a fair amount of coyotes. Um, there's some talk of panthers in the area. Um, so, thank you, Damien. Appreciate that. Leslie, um, here. I would recommend this is a Foxfire book. That's one of the things that's covered in these books is all types of useful things. Uh, one of which is soap making. And you do it, okay? Wood ash and rendered fat are gonna be two of your components um, to make it happen. So, No, no fried crickets for you. Lame white rice, go for it. What is soap, right? It's the thing that makes your butthole not smell like death. So. Uh, Moonlight, yeah, there's, there's a whole series of Foxfire books. David McGregor, thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Um, guy that comments. Uh, there's a whole series and I know very little about today's com or about today's bombings. I've seen the headlines. I haven't looked into them. Uh, I, do I think it's a coincidence that things are blown up on Easter? No. Um, no, I don't. No, your butthole is not supposed to smell like death. And if you drop your trousers at the end of the day and almost passed out from the stench that wafts up, you need a field expedient bathing experience. <laughs> Patriot, roger that. Get the books, they don't require voltage. Amen. I don't know which one talks about gunpowder. We have the whole, um, the whole, all of them are on the shelf. So, hi, Bear. Underground Wes. Hi, Underground Wes. Chanel number five. Yes, how did you know? Taz, what's up, Taz? Good night, Aaron. Go get some sleep. Yeah, there are no coincidences, y'all. There's just not. That's not how the world works. Yes, they're like prepping encyclopedias, but the cool thing is there's lots of really good pictures, and they walk you through it, and they were written at a time where technology was not like it is today. It does not assume that everything's like, you know... Um, solid state and digital, right? It's like using axes and cast iron, here's how you don't die. Try bug mace at Amazon. Okay, email me that brother, because I will forget. Matthew, shalom. Yeah, James, yeah, they're not terrible. Mike 184, what's going on? 
Listen, NWA, I like you, but don't call me Big Papa in front of everybody else, okay? It makes me a little... I don't know. I don't like it when other people watch. You know this. You know this. What are your thoughts on reloading for SHTF? I actually answered this question recently for a Patreon client. If you're going to uh, stock more than 10,000 rounds and you have free time, go for it. If you're not and you don't, don't bother with it. It's gonna take your time and at some point you have to do the cost benefit analysis. You're trading time for money. Like that's, that's how this life works. It's time or money. So if you don't have the time and you don't have the money, reloading's not for you. If you have the money and you don't have the time, buy ammo. If you have the time but you don't have the money, start reloading. That's exactly, su that's exactly right, Super Steve. So I have, thank you, uh, Metrim, Netrim. I have nothing against reloading. I just think that people get into it prematurely and realize that they don't have the bandwidth to actually do anything good with it. So they never actually meet, uh, they never actually get a return on their investment. So put a dryer sheet in both your, yeah, it gets dark quick around here, man. We, we don't have mountains, but we got some pretty tall hills. So... How are your lambs and goats? Um, Brennan, see, you're not on Patreon, so you don't know. Um, we have no more goats, and we have five new sheep because the other ones were... Um, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty sad. James Taylor, shalom, man. I wonder, are you the James Taylor from New York that I know in person? Sorry I'm late. Aname, Aname. This is Frank and this Michelob Ultra sure tastes good. Shalom, Frank. Good to see you, brother. Daisy Taylor. Is that you, me? My mommy said, if I eat all my broccoli, good for you, Stephen. Did you eat all your broccoli? Hey, Ethan. Any plans on being in Colorado? Not currently. Uh, always subject to change. Drop and give bear 20, right? Um, I wonder if there's a porch I can find some light on. Shiner is a good beer. I'm a fan of Shiner. Let's go for a walk, y'all. Roar! Here we go. Maybe. Oh, stand by. Stand by. Got to tighten my belt up. You know what? We're gonna have a bio break. You guys stay here, chat quietly amongst yourselves. I'm gonna go water this tree, it looks a little parched, and we'll walk down to the barn. Who just dropped us a 20? What's up with that? Oh, that's Adam Martin. Hey, Adam Martin. We already talked about that. All right, y'all, I want you guys to know that sometimes when I have to pee, there's like a little, there's like a little poot right there. And I didn't let that little poot out this time because I was worried you guys would judge me if you heard it on camera. So like, we're friends, but we're not all the way there yet, you know? Like, we've still got some work to do. All right, let's go this way. <laughs> JC, <laughs> you're welcome. You don't have to stay and listen. Just saying. Let's go this way. What is going on? It's dark in Grandma's house. That means they're probably drinking wine on the front porch. What are y'all doing? Of 
water too. So I wonder about you. I wonder about Can you see me? They weren't worried about the purity. I'd be worried about the purity if they died. Hmm. What's up, Yankee Watch Dog? <laughs> Thank you, Daisy. No, we just turned a light on. See? So, what else are we going to talk about? There we go. Up. Oh my goodness. Well, I dropped my battery. Down in viruses, bacteria, you know, there we go. Stuff like that. So, I don't know. Don't but, swing while live stream. <laughs> yeah, people get dizzy. Okay. That's probably our next. Yeah, I heard about Sri Lanka. Our next big. Type thing hey. is we want to have water, water stored. Either. I'm going to go down to the barn so y'all can talk. Okay. Okay. So that way you're not trying to listen to me oh, while I talk. Stream. Yeah, you want to say hi to the people? Hi, people. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to the barn. I mean, the bunker. Bye, Grandma. I'll be down shortly. Thank you for dinner. Love you, too. <laughs> Love you, too. Thank you for dinner. Well, he said thank you for dinner. Thank you for dinner. Thank you for dinner. You're mostly welcome. I'll see you soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. All right, y'all, let's go for a walk. What do we got? Trousman, I'd like to know how your thoughts on the no-hide laws as well. My thoughts on the no-hide laws? I believe all the covenants stack. Hi, Danny. I really can't read the questions and walk at the same time. But the good news is it's only, you know, we're only going a couple hundred meters. You see how dark it gets out here? Oh my gosh, y'all. We're going to die. You guys should Google Oklahoma Dog Man. Yeah, it's uh, hopefully I will get attacked on camera right now by the Oklahoma Dog Man so that we can prove that it exists because it's basically Sasquatch with a dog face, which is like, cool, you know? That's unique, you know, good for him. He really knows who he is, you know? He's like, I wanna be tall and furry, but with a dog face. I don't wanna look like a pissed off orangutan. I want a dog face. So, that's good stuff. I just moved from okay. Well, no more dog man for you. You got 20. Oh, can't see me. Well, I'm coming. I'm getting to the, I'm getting to the barn bunker place. I was gonna do, I mean, the title of this live stream is impromptu chat. Like, I didn't think there'd be 260 some people here. I thought there'd just be a handful and we'd talk a hot minute and it would be good to go. Now I have to, I have to ford this raging creek two steps today pretty serious we're almost to the barn it's actually more like 300 meters i guess we'll run next time it's actually probably good you can't see me because y'all would get uh motion sick i used to get those comments all the time when i would do walking talks stop walking bear you're gonna make me sick What's wrong with you? Don't you know that you shouldn't walk and talk at the same time? Sorry. 
Okay, now we're up by the hoose. Light switch on. Coming here into the bunker. Shazam. You guys on Patreon are gonna lose your proverbial bowels when you see this giveaway this month. Oh my goodness. And I say that because I just walked in here and it's sitting here on the table. And I really want to uh, show you what it is, but I'm not gonna until I do the video. I can't, I can't. Um, I mean, I can, but I'm not going to. It's not yet. I love losing my bowels. Uh, I think it's better than last month. Yeah, I, this thing is dumb cool. Like, yeah, I'm really proud of it. Justin, I've thought about that. Um, my issue with that is lighting. Like, I like mosquitoes. Hey, Granny B. Shalom, sister. Put my name in twice. I'll think about it. No, I won't. Um, yeah, I'm telling you. You know what? Everybody hold your breath. I'm going to show you real quick, and it's not complete. I'm waiting on one more thing to come. Can't believe I'm doing this. Shalom. You guys ready? This is custom. There you go. Done. And I'm not telling you a word of what it is. Keith Mead, you're welcome, brother. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm telling... Ah, gosh. Gosh. I'm not going to tell you. Wait for the video. Wait for the video. Because, uh, yeah, and there's one more, one more thing coming. <gasps> Be still my beating heart. Can we just say handmade in America? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be tremendous. Believe me, believe me. And we didn't even have to get Mexico to pay for it. Like, I'm super stoked. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I got to move it. Otherwise, I'm going to keep playing with it. <laughs> Go over here. Be over there by the microphone. All right. Good. So... Yeah, yeah, Easter is pagan. Could you please refresh my memory and let me know where you shop online for your mill spec gear? I'm looking for a couple other pouches for my plate carrier, tea, anyone. Um, go to adventurefrontier.com, check them out. If they don't have what you're looking for, go to the preppingpug.com. Uh, and if you can't find a pre-made from either of them, go to sojourngear.com. Other than that, I mean, Condor. So, when it comes to stockpiling ammo, should I stockpile quantity, quality, match grade brass case, etc., or quantity, factory rear end steel case, etc.? Okay, not one more inch. Great question. Um, so, I'm going to turn off chat for a minute so I don't get distractified. Here's the deal, homie. When it comes to ammo, I think that all of your pistol mags should be loaded or be capable to be loaded with expanding ammunition, hollow points, critical defense, whatever. Like, uh, for example, here's one, okay? Like that, and then, hold on. War belt! I got a... Warbell. Here's another one. And just, you know, for all the peeps, here's a side-by-side. -side. 45 
9 millimeter. Okay. So I think all of your pistol mags should be loaded with expanding ammunition. And without getting into all the, well, sometimes you want a hardball ammo to knock through a blah, blah, blah. Yeah, without all the blah, blah, blahs, uh, expanding ammunition. And then your reloads from there, I'm totally cool with either FMJ or um, if you have the money, get more expanding ammunition. I tend to stock as reloads. I keep all of my defensive pistols are filled with expanding ammunition. I have a little bit of extra expanding ammunition and then it's all full metal jacket from there. As far as what do I stockpile for ammo? The vast majority of it is this is remand 55 grain. See that? Probably not. There we go. This is remand 55 grain. This is in a P mag cause. And then I believe somewhere around here, this is, this is good ammo. This is 62 grain soft point. Can you see the little bit of lead on the end? Probably not. Let's see here. Come out of her, my people. There we go. Can you see that? A little bit of lead. That's really good ammo. It's very accurate. And then that little bit of a soft point on the end. Gives it some oomph when it gets to where it's going. And then like over here, we should have, yep, 62 grain LAP. So this is once fired brass, remanufactured with a steel core round. Focus, you dummy. Okay, so here's the deal. If your gun can run steel cased, stock steel cased. And I think that guns should be capable of running steel cased ammunition like I don't love having guns around that that fail when you feed them steel cased ammo um, I think you should stock decent quality ammunition once fired brass loaded with 55 or 62 grain good to go for rifles when it comes to a precision rifle buy boxed ammo Buy 20 round, you know, 175 grain match 308 or whatever caliber you take. Buy good ammunition because a long gun that's scoped, you want it to, it's scoped for a reason. You want it to hit where you need it to hit, right? So I wouldn't skimp on that. But when it comes to carbine, once fired brass is relatively inexpensive. Um, both in 556 five, by 45 and 762 by 39. And if you're a 545 five by 45 guy, that's, you know, you can find that or 300 blackout, which I'm serves a purpose, but I don't recommend generally speaking. So decent ammo. I don't think that you need pallets of 77 grain match 556, five, but I also wouldn't recommend getting pallets of steel cased 55 grain Tulamo unless your gun can run it um, and run it well. The fact of the matter is not all guns run it well and it tends to be dirty and underpowered. So, you know, getting some remanufactured 62 grain, good stuff. Remanufactured 55 grain, good stuff. American Eagle, Fiocchi, Federal, um, you know, Winchester White Box. Any of that, any of that stuff is gonna be just fine. Um, I would rather when it comes to quality versus quantity, I don't think it's good for you psychologically to wonder whether or not your equipment is going to work when you pull the trigger. I think you need to know here and here that when I, when I do this, there's no question. So eliminate all doubt and stock decent ammo that you can afford. Okay. Okay. Back to the live chat. Julie, how's it going? Yeah, look, uh, that's a great point, NWA Prepper. Adventure Frontier, if you don't see it there, just drop an email to the proprietor. Um, Shalom from North Idaho. Classic bear move. You caught me, Patriot. You caught me, man. The thing is, this stuff is sexy, dude. I mean, look at this stuff. Look at this. 
Look at it. Animalistic. Marlo, Marlo, Marlo. Oh, baby, let my people go. Uh. I'm organizing a fire and water boiling contest for our Atlanta Viking meeting. North Point Axe is making us a one-of-a-kind handmade axe for a first-place prize. I love it. Um, I love it. And anybody who's here but doesn't know anything about uh, um, the Viking meetups... That's a Pastor Joe thing. It's coordinated through uh, the community section on his Patreon page. Worth a dollar a month. And uh, the revolting man, I believe, is involved in those as well. And North Point Axe is doing a good job of taking care of him with those things. So if you're not a revolting man fan, you should be. You should go check out The Revolting Man. Great channel. Good guy. We've talked on the phone a few times. I like him a lot. So... Any inside clues about Viking training tax three? Start doing push ups. If I inherited weapons many years ago, are they saved to fire? I don't know what you mean by that, Jacques Bird. Good evening, TJ and everyone else. West Central Arkansas here. Good evening, Joseph Brown. I believe we've met before. When it comes to prepping, what kind of books should be purchased? We just talked about by the uh, Foxfire books. Good stuff. Oh, heckles, yeah, man. DL, that's correct. Yeah, the revolting woman. Caddy Wampus, shalom, brother. Liberty, civil defense, short and fat. What I like to tell people is sometimes slow and fat wins the race. Shalom, shalom. Frank Burns, that's awesome, man. PGF's book, he is great. Okay, Storm Chaser. Shalom, brother. Good to see you. We just did, uh, we just answered your question for Patreon today. I don't know when it'll post, but we just shot it today. I need some water. Richard Wells. Shalom, brother. Chuck Rizzo. What up, Chuck? Good to see you. No, I wouldn't vacuum seal your ammo in Mylar. Hummy Biscuits is tremendous. I would put, if you wanted to long-term store your ammo, put them in an ammo can with a gasket or in a bucket with a lid with a gasket, throw some oxy absorbers in there and call it good. Okay? The end. Um, now, I mean, depending on where the guy lives, if he lives in New Orleans below sea level, maybe. Maybe that makes sense, right? Scott Chasney, shalom, brother. The maniacs. Amen. You people just aren't right, man. Just aren't. You got Stephen King, and then, you know, the freaking, what's that lady? Kathy Bates put that guy in the bed and chained him down and broke his legs and, like that with the feet. Willfully deplorable. Shalom, brother. Ian McPhee. Ian McPhee. Is freezing food before the Mylar bucket overkill? No, not necessarily, because if there are any bugs in it, it will kill it. Depends on the time of year, and it depends on where you are. If you have any question about that, misery, amen. If you have any question about that, absolutely do it. And if you have a chest freezer, it's much easier to throw that stuff in the top of the chest freezer for three days than it is to put it in your freezer in your fridge. Uh, that's a great way to have whoever is not on board in your house with prepping pissed at you. So... What's your go-to chainsaw bear? Steel, MS-362, good saw. Or 391, good saw. Uh, I have an 066 Magnum uh, from the way back that I bought new probably 20 years ago now. It's phenomenal. In fact, I have half a mind to go get it since it is kind of a show and tell evening. I should go get that 066. Can y'all behave yourselves for like 30 seconds? She stays pissed at me anyway. Mike, you buy it green and you roast it when you need it and you vacuum seal it. Do it. Roger that, David. Be right back. Do it. Do it now. I'm here. Kill me. Jump, Dana. Daddy loves you. Get to the chopper.
Stop playing out, daddy loves you. Okay, this is a chainsaw. This is not a toy. This is a steel 066 Magnum that's imported that has an eight tooth sprocket that uh, runs a 32 inch bar that I've had for 20 years or so. Here's the bar on this sucker. I don't even think I can get it in the shot, maybe. So, I'm back. Yeah, this thing's an animal. So, I mean, look, the, the handle right now is there's a zip tie right there and some electrical tape like this thing has been through war. So, I mean, look at the dogs on it. Look at the bucking spikes on this thing. So when I tell you guys, I used to cut timber. This is one of my saws from back in the day. This was my saw. When I had to work a site and I had to fell trees, that sucker right there, that's my jam. And I would run it with this 32, uh, 32 inch bar on it. And I would run it because it's been ported and it has an 8 tooth sprocket uh, and bored out. I would run it with a full chisel chain and I'd carry a skip chisel chain with me in a backpack. And then I'd carry a 20 inch bar and two spare chains for the 20 back there as well. But uh, cutting big wood, this saw gets it done. So, thank you, Scotty Brooks. <laughs> Tactical Texas Chainsaw Massacre Addiction. Edition. Yeah, this saw is beast mode, man. So, right? Chasing Live, who'd have thought? All right, so I'm going to go set this out of the way just for a moment. But this thing... I'm just telling you, it's an animal. Uh, it's an animal. <laughs> That's why we just became best friends. What? Did we just become best friends? Urgh. The other thing, too, for real, is, like, if you spend any time in the woods running a big saw like you're gonna you're gonna get some of this just from holding on to that thing 10 12 hours a day so yeah 460 mag is that's a great saw dude great saw asplund back in the day yeah it's not e not even that noticeable on your face i don't know what you're talking about so okay thank you 440, Roger. So, yeah, you, you're going to build some guns running a saw like that. That's my saw. She's not named. It's just that's my 066. Um, Logan, I didn't see you. Man, what's up? Send it one more time. Both methods with good results. I don't know what we're talking about now. I 
Uh, Hunter, if I'm employing a pistol, it's to hit a soft target, and FMJ is not as good at doing that as a, a JHPs are. Yeah, it, it, Patriot, we're going to run to each other slowly. There's going to be background music. Time's going to stop. Using dry ice instead of oxygen absorbers. Just go with oxygen absorbers, man. 075. Yeah, I've never run one, but I've seen them. Um, I knew a guy that had one. O2 absorber versus dry ice. Just use the O2 absorbers. They're dependable. They're cheap. They're like consistent. They're readily available. Um, I mean, I don't love you guys going to Amazon to get things. I don't love going to Amazon to get things, but boy, you can get anything you want on Amazon. So get some oxygen absorbers. Have you been around a Desert Eagle 50 AE? Yes, I have. One of these days will get you converted to a Husky. Hey, I'll tell you what, I ran a 372 recently um, that belonged to a brother last fall, actually. And it's a hell of a saw. It really is a hell of a saw. I, um, my thing is, and I, I openly admit my bias, I, the guy that I worked for when I first started cutting timber, I was running a Husky 1080 XP 108 cc saw. I don't know where he got it from. I think it might've been a Canadian saw. And it weighed as much as two cinder blocks and it had a huge bar on it. And all we did with it, uh, was fell, um, spruce trees and just giant softwoods. Like that's all we did. Hemlocks, uh, like just nonstop felling giant softwood trees. And it weighed so much. Yeah. 108 CC drove me crazy. It had an 84 inch bar on it. Okay, that's a seven foot bar, by the way. All right, so I'm, I don't, I'm just, yeah, hiking around the woods with a seven foot bar chainsaw, felling giant trees, and it weighed a freaking ton. So, and it would get hot, and then it would have to cool down again in order to start it up again. So, yeah, Sojourn can do whatever you want, man. And so I was, when I started buying my own saws, I started buying steels instead of huskies. Um, because at the time, steels were lighter than huskies, and I didn't have that problem with them overheating. Um, I didn't freeze my food before the Mylar's R2s and Bucket. You'll probably be fine, Moonlight. Uh, somebody asked a question back here. Underground West. No, I was not in the military. I was a DOD security contractor at the beginning of the global war on terror, which was directly after 9-11. I wanted to be in the Marine Corps. It didn't work out. Um, I injured my sternum. I've talked about this quite a bit in several other videos, and it just wasn't going to happen. And then so anyway, life happened. I got called up to do some other kind of work, and then from there I became a subject matter expert for the DIA and the DOE with a specialty in the National Transmission Infrastructure Grid, electrical grid. So, But I've worked around a lot of military guys and done a lot of the things, so... Honey, come, come here, honey. What's up, Scout? Shalom. Come here. What, what you doing? You're welcome, Wes. Hello. Oh, you're on the phone. Good night, Adam Martin. Bless you, brother. What's up, Aaron Martin? What's up? Yeah, it is a mouthful. Scout's a good kid. I just pulled up home, but I'm saying hi to dad. <laughs> oh, and then I'll be right here. Okay. Hi. Are you needed in the hoose? Yes. Come on over. Say hello to the peeps. Hi, peeps. This is my wife. Granny B was on here earlier. I don't know if she still is or not. Like what you do. Thanks, man. I was in the Army for three years. Signed up SF. Roger that. Mealyworms. Brennan. That's Brennan. That's the, the Brennan. The Brennan. That, that's Hi, the Brennan. Brennan. <laughs> Wifey. <laughs> Jeff, what's up, brother? 
Um, there's Granny hey, B. Granny. Yeah, dear, you need every time you come here because you're so much shorter than I'm me. Tiny. We need to do this. There we go. So, hi, homie, sheepdog, <laughs> Daisy, Yankee, Richard. Yeah. Hey, Richard, we got an email about the thing for the next thing with the thing. Um, would you send me an email, brother, and just let's touch base on that thing with the other thing that we talked about at the last thing. So, try and survive and shalom, brother. Um, Jeff Durham. Shalom. Knife hand. Jeff Knife Hand. Sorry. Um, how you doing? Do you have a good time hanging with Grandma? Yeah. What did you guys talk about? Uh, this moth in my face? All the things. <laughs> Thank you, Mark Chase. Ice cream for Aspen and the kids. Bless you, brother. Appreciate that. You should that. have seen her eating ice cream earlier. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so funny. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we were just talking. We were talking uh, some Bible stuff. Some Bible stuff. And we were talking some wine stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And Good combo. So, we were talking chainsaw stuff. Well, we were actually, we were talking about diversification. Okay. Of monies. Okay. And I told her. To me, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because just like with prepping and having like food preps, you don't. Yes, yeah, she's adorable. I love her to pieces. <laughs> Um, but just like with food preps, you don't want, I would say we could go on the porch, but yeah, we could, it's like all the bugs out. Do you even buffer bro? But yes. Yeah, so we were talking about, um, the diversification. diversification and that was not planned. Good job. Yeah. And, uh. Mm water storage and hand pumps and purification versus filtration and all the things all the things me and grandma were talking everything about everything you think of we talk about while drinking a bottle of wine that's what yeah. we drink me and okay See? I told you. well i'm waiting for you to we're not going to stand here in the doorway. Oh. You got to go turn the back light on on the porch. Oh, and it's nice and cool out there. Yeah. All right, guys. You Do you see me? Oh, and we got the big, we got the mothership right here. Oh. So, why don't you give me the mothership, please? I'm please, favor, as they say in the Espanol. Man, I, I spreck in that Espanol, muy bueno. Oh my gosh, you were so good at camera. Five by five, roger that, Super Steve. There we go. Back to our, <laughs> our witness uh, security right. look. And then we take this thing. See the efforts that I must go through for you guys so that we can talk. And we hook, we hook this thing into this thing like this. We plug this thing into the side of this thing. Cranberry wine sounds divine. Cranberry? Mm hmm You got some of that cranberry? Hear that? Hear the coyote? Want to send seeds. Uh, shoot us an email, November Tango X Ray Mike Alpha Golf NTX Mag at Gmail, and um, I'll uh, give you a shipping address. Turn on a light. We have a light on out here. Yeah, it's up there. So if I split now, will death be good next winter? Right. I have no idea what that means. I love cranberry juice. Yeah, it's good for urinary tract infections. Mm -hmm. I love it too. Is Hami wearing armor? Yes, right yep. now. Overalls. <laughs> Their overalls made of soft armor. Um, so, yeah. Yes, she is wearing armor. She's wearing the armor of God, y'all. Yeah. She is. No. I got some super cute overall-y shorts, so. 
Any tips for a single mum? What kind of tips? Like prepping tips? That'd be a good one. Here, let's riff on that for a little bit. Tips for a single mom. I'm gonna pause the chat for a minute. What do you got, babe? Generally, single moms are very tight budgeted. Um, so my input would be picking up what you can where you can. Like whether it's an extra box of mac and cheese, um, a bag of rice, but as far as food storage goes, a little bit over a course of time will go a long ways. So do what you can, you know, whether it's $5 or a dollar, just get something, get started getting something in storage. Mm. I like that. And secondly, have a plan because mm -hmm. I don't know how many kids you have, but, or how old they are, but bugging out with babies, we've done this before, not gonna happen. Yep. So have a plan, have relays if your plan involves traveling some good distance have people that you can trust that you can kind of make pit stops along the way um i don't know i want to add a couple things mm -hmm. um number one as a single mom you're probably stressed out and yeah very stressed. and so this is the opposite advice i think that you'd get at most prepping channels but I would definitely advise you to do some self-care. Make an opportunity for you to just be you, to scream and laugh and cry and giggle and, and pray and do all the things because I'm huge on positions of strength. Mm -hmm. You gotta be good so that everybody else can be good, right? But you gotta be good. And so I would look at self-care just real honestly, even if it's 15 minutes, if it's just, 15 minutes of quiet with you and your Bible and a good cup of coffee first thing in the morning, do that. No. Um, and then I would also say that pretty much anywhere in the country, in North America, and then I would also say in like, you know, Canada, um, England, you know, the United Kingdom, you said mum, so I'm guessing, you know, either in the United Kingdom or in Canada, Canada, depending on what part of Canada you're in. Um, there's lots of free courses, women's self-defense courses, take them. Uh, first aid courses for free or just for the cost of the materials, take those. Join an orienteering club, which is for $7, will teach you how to navigate with a compass. Um, start doing those things that are low impact monetarily that are also a pretty good experience for your kids. Uh -huh. um, you know, and then also, you know, get right with your maker for sure, spiritual preparedness, but physical preparedness, body weight calisthenics are free. Go do dips on your stairs. Uh -huh. You can do inclined push-ups on your stairs. You can do lunges and crunches and body weight squats, you know, in a hallway. You can do pull-ups and chin-ups on a door frame, like, work all of that it right. costs you nothing other than a little bit of your time um and so that you're you know it's either time or money we were talking about this earlier it's time or money and as a single mom you don't have either of those two things mm -hmm. so i would be looking for things that you can do to bring your kids in on like the the training right. you know hey we're gonna go to the paramedics this weekend and learn how to apply tourniquets and and what a pressure dressing is and why we use it like that could be fun with the right, right age of kids walking in the woods and hiking that can be right. fun um so that's two birds one stone and Practice then just being quiet yeah so scare off animals situational awareness <laughs> this is something that i do with my kids all the time what direction are we facing mm -hmm. you know what compass heading are we on yeah. where are which we which way is east which right way? yeah where's the nearest intersection what color was the last car that came by? You know, things like that and, and priming their mind to be in receive mode all the time. Um, 
so bless you, man. I'm sorry you're a single yeah. mom. Um, I don't know what the circumstances are, but the father does. So bless you. Everything is by his hand for a reason. And so I just chin up, understand that like, this is all just for time. Right. And that whatever it was that happened that got you to this place right now, all of that was in preparation for the blessing that's on the other side of this thing. So just <laughs> seek his face, be joy, joyous, be joyful, lead your children to the best of your ability. And and you know you pray like it all depends on him because it does and you work as if it all depends on you because it does mm -hmm. uh, that's what i would do live chat what else we got bear was asking jmb about seasoning pine for fireplace and stove um yeah three to six months if you got it thank you you sheepdog three to six months for seasoning pine how can i be a backup place for you is it doable um alexis you need to email me november tango x-ray mike alpha golf um and we have a, a very rigid protocol for meeting people because not they're not saying you're not somebody good just we get a lot we have a very rigid protocol for meeting people uh, um we get lots of people who want to come in our lives and for obvious reasons we can't just let people in so because of that we have a system to let people in um so puzzleman why are you running the temperature man we rebuked that in the name of yeshua well, i don't look, like it. 101 is still like that's just your body fighting infection don't do anything for it don't give yourself tylenol he knows. He's yeah. the guy that sent us the box with all the natural oh, the medicines. Goodies. The goodies. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. That right? was awesome. <laughs> We've been using it. Uh, I would like to emulate that system, OPSEC. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk a little bit about what that system looks like. I have Corey for you in rural Ohio if you ever want need. William, email me because we have lots of people in Ohio already, okay? Right. Um, Okay, let's talk about our protocol for meeting people because I get this question repeatedly about how do I find, or I found people, but we don't know how to go about dating them. So step one, and for us, I don't want anybody moving into my area because of us. Uh -uh. If you're coming here already, that's cool, but don't come here because of us because you might find out after a month you don't like us and now you're here. Right. I, I don't want that for you. So if you're already relocating into this area, we can talk right. and we do talk and we exchange emails and we talk on the phone and then we set up, when I tell you guys, date people, build context, do life together, fall in love, get up in each other's business, that's what we do. You set up a date. You set you and meet in a public place. We go to lunch. If somebody happens to be a psychopath, you have lots of witnesses and you can get out. And the other thing, too, is <laughs> if we go to lunch at noon, I have an appointment at 2, mm -hmm. regardless. And there's, I might, we might fall in love, first date. You guys are awesome. We love you guys. You're great. The Father clearly put our paths together, but we got to go. Mm -hmm. I got a thing to do at 2. So there's a hard out. So replicate that in your systems. There's a hard out. You meet for a set period of time, there's a hard out. And you meet on neutral ground, not at your place or their place. And you meet over coffee or lunch or, or something like that, right. okay? The next step is you get together and you bring your kids. If you have them. And yeah. they bring their kids if they have them because it's one thing to like somebody. It's a whole other thing to like somebody's family as well, right? And so there's a whole dynamic that goes on there is that it's not just the man and his wife, or maybe all you met was the or just wife. just the husband. Right. Or, and, yeah. And the, now you get to see, you learn a lot about somebody by the way they interact with their spouse, by the way they interact with their kids, the way their spouse or their kids interact with them. And so you do the same thing, neutral ground, have a heart out. We're going to go to the park and we're going to spend three hours at the park, but little Tommy has a softball game at four or whatever. So we can only stay till 3.30, hard out, right? And you do that. And then the next thing you do is you meet there at their place or they meet there at your place for a half a day, four hours, that's it. Four hours, that's it. And then after that, if they make it that far, then you can have a conversation about, 
yeah, I think I want you in my life or no, mm -hmm. I don't No, It's, Hey, it's not going to work. And you need to be willing to be honest with each other with no expectation. You're managing right. this expectation the whole time. Listen, we have a process. If it works out great, if it doesn't work out, no hard feelings, but anybody can throw a fag, a flag on the field at any time, right? Like anybody can go oh, out of bounds. Don't like it. This isn't working. Right. You know, my wife can say, no, Vito, not interested. I could say, no, don't like them. Uh, and you can say it and your wife can say it or whatever, right? So, and then from there, if you guys decide, yeah, we, we all love each other, this is good, let's move forward with this. You don't know everything I have. I don't know everything you have. You don't know, part of this is trust. And if you say you have a year's worth of food, that should be verifiable. You should be able to show me, hey, this is my year's worth of food. Okay, and vice versa. But beyond that, I don't need to know how many guns you have or how much ammo you have or where they are or what your medical is or this or that. Like, this is dating. Mm -hmm. We have circles within circles within circles. The closest people right. to me, I mean, you're here. You don't even know all the stuff I have and where it is. Okay? Because if something ever happened, for real, if something ever happened and somebody's like, tell me everything, she can't. Okay? So compartmentalization. Not everybody in your team needs to know everything about everybody all the time. And so it's dating. It's dating. You didn't. Now, I met my wife. The first time I met my wife, I knew because time stopped because the father dropped a ton of bricks on my head and was like, that's your wife. Pay attention. Switch it on. You need to learn. And nine days later, I was like, this S is going to sound crazy, but I love you. And you were like, oh, good, because I love you, too. And I was like, awesome. Let's do this life thing together. Right. But generally speaking, that's not how it happens. So you got to date people, right? You, you got to build context with people. You got to fall in love with them. And you don't, you don't give away your virginity on the first date with any of this. And you don't let people into your vulnerable places on the first date. That takes a lot of time. Yep. It takes a lot of time. So cool. Live chat. 10 points awarded to TJ. Thank you, Patriot. Oh, wait. I'm in front of the camera. This is great stuff. I don't play well with others. Sorry, honey. They smell bad. <laughs> I try to make it work too hard, even if it seems sour. Don't. 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 There's more because, people. Because in that... In a SHTF situation where you're going to need those people, they're going to piss you off. Yep. Good night. Good night, Grumpy. Bear, I'm moving to Texas. This is my home. I want to meet you and your beautiful family. I'm moving to Texas. We're not in Texas anymore. Mm -mm. Um, if you're moving into the eastern Oklahoma region... Or Western Arkansas region, you can, and I will not opsec ourselves any further than that. You can shoot me an email, but we're not in Texas anymore. Are there any regrets about homesteading? That's a great question. For me, no, there's no regrets. Uh, really, Amen, no. Amen, Patriot. No, like, I feel 100% fully blessed that we are here and uh, you know in the process of homesteading are there things that we should have done differently yes absolutely but as far as making the move to be here to start our homestead no regrets there nope. and um, you just made me think of that no regrets neck tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> no R A G E R T S. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no regrets. <laughs> but no, like after having been here, yes, there's things that, you know, like with our animals, with our goats, with our sheep, like there are things that we should have done differently. We didn't take them as seriously as we right. should have. And because of that, we lost them. Yep. So, um, 
you know, that was a huge lesson for us that, you know, it's not... It's not playtime. No. It's, you know, this is your money, this is your food, and if you don't take it seriously, you're not going to have it. Well, and we're responsible for it. I right. mean, those, yeah. truthfully, those animals suffered and died, which is not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to live a good life, and I wanted to end their life cleanly and then process them myself with my own two right. hands and put them in our freezer and then ultimately our belly. Mm -hmm. And that didn't happen because initially we didn't take it seriously enough. Right. You know, we, I grew up on a farm. We did our backyard homesteading in North Texas and we got out here and, you know, I didn't have to worry about things running into my backyard per se and trying to kill my livestock. The occasional possum or raccoon, but not a pack of dogs, right. not coyotes, not things like that. And so... I don't regret any of that because we learned from it. Right. I would regret it if we didn't learn from it. Yeah. Um, but again, it's eyes wide open, staying switched on. It's like, you know, do the hard things. Wow, that sucked. Okay, dig a hole. Let's move on. Right. You know, like, like I, I love our property. Mm -hmm. I love our location. Um, I love our friends. I love the people we have around oh us. Oh my gosh, Everyone we have that we've met the gr like, the greatest tribe yeah. and team. Our daughter told us the other day, she was like, if we had to go back to Texas, I don't know what I would do. Like the people here yep. have changed my life. Like they are so real and yeah, that was, I don't know what blessing. I would do. And so for us, that was like huge, huge confirmation that like our kids love it. And yeah. that was our, that was our biggest fear in that was the one hold up making the move is because they they were older you know aspen we knew she was you know she would rebound wherever because she was young enough but our kids were old enough that you know they had where we were they had friends that they had had for years and years like since they started school and lifetime friends right and so for us that was our biggest fear was taking them from those lifetime friends that they had had to somewhere completely new that, you know, in their preteen kind of years, like, how would that affect them? Well, we also knew that if we didn't rip that Band-Aid off soon, it was only going to get worse. Right. And, like, and yeah, do we do it when they're in high school? Like, that's really going to suck. Right. So <laughs> it was kind of like, well, you know, I guess if we're going to do it, now's the time to do it and let's just keep our fingers crossed that yep. this is the right the right path and they'll have good people and they do mm -hmm. and that that means and they love it here. the world to me so. you know watch, watching them all they were all running up the driveway to grandma's house earlier mm -hmm. and uh we were we were bringing stuff up to grandma so we were following them in my wife's car and she looked over at me and she goes i live for moments like this all three kids holding the hands running up the driveway giggling you know it's framed perfectly by two rows of sentinel pines it's like you can't make that crap up mm -hmm. like hallmark would pay a billion dollars for mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. if they could bottle it and sell it because it's real and so I, I don't regret one bit of it you know are there things i would change if i could yeah, I wish all my friends lived closer, but they live close enough. Like, we can reach out and touch each other when we need them, mm -hmm. um, you know? But other than that, eh, we're better than good. We're exactly where we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So, let's see here. Live, live chat. Opinion on stocking raw honey. Go for it. Yep. Never <laughs> expires. Do it. Yep. Good sweetener. Good medicinally. Regarding permitting registering for being authorized for homeschooling. Um, Sean, in Oklahoma, it's very, there's very little of that. Um, uh, Oklahoma is kind of a sleeper state because there's very little state revenue. And there is a large amount of poverty in a lot of places. But the best that I've heard it put so far is Oklahoma is what Texas wishes it was. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of freedom here. Right. You can pretty much do whatever the hell you want to do. So we've had, the only interaction we've had with local government was paying our 
taxes, which were $560 on 20 plus acres with two houses and so forth and so on. Yeah. So. And we don't, I mean, I don't homeschool because I don't have the patience for my kids. Brandon, <laughs> amen. Four hours a day. That's <laughs> awesome, Brandon. I've, I've got to have a break and the kids love the schools here and we knew in moving that you know, taking them away from those lifelong friends that they had, we didn't want to completely seclude them. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but we didn't want to seclude them. We wanted them to make friends. And um, so, and I have been completely happy with hey, the schools. Hey, Jeremiah. With the schools here. Like... Our kids are in gifted and talented, whereas in Texas they weren't. Um, They're in band. They get to do band in elementary school. They have food that they can at least eet during the day that, you know, right. they're trying to be tour observant. They are tour observant, so. Um, they get to do school sports in elementary school. Like, the school systems offer a lot of good things, and because the the school district doesn't necessarily have all the funding that they need. Like they have old textbooks. Um, they don't have, you know, the nicest classrooms, but the teachers are genuine and they love to teach. Mm -hmm. And the way that our school system is set up is Good those night, teachers have my kids for three grades. Like they're teaching Shalom, all Logan. the grades. Oh yeah, that's that's the cool and thing so too. They my stay kids with don't them. Don't have to get used to a new teacher. Um, they have the same one, and or the same ones because they all rotate. But um, it's just it's completely different than what we were used to. Even what I was used to going to public school, and I really really love it. So yep. yeah, I've been very pleasantly surprised by the school here and. One thing that really blew me away was... Um, <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> uh, uh, we had... The kids had a basketball game at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And my wife was like, come on, let's go to this basketball game. I'm like, oh, okay, we'll go. It was like, it'll be us and Aspen sitting on the, the bleachers watching kids run across the hardwood. That place was packed. It was standing room only at like 1 p.m. on a Wednesday, and there were nurses there in their nurse uniforms. There were guys from the welding shop there, and they're wearing their dicky shirts with their name tags on. You know, the guy from the used car lot was there in his slacks and his polo, jingling change in his pocket. Like, the whole town shows up. Mm -hmm. Like, at 1 o'clock on a Wednesday, oh, there's a game? We'll be there. Right. Doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the day. We'll figure it out. We'll be there. And so <clears throat> it's very genuine to me that people take it that seriously to go to go to an elementary school basketball game on right. 1 o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon is standing room only. So that's when I was like, okay, yeah. we're where we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. These people have a – they might not have a ton of money, but they have a vested interest in the well-being of their community. So, Richard yeah. Wells, amen. So, yeah, we dig it. And somebody asked, like, Cheyenne plays clarinet and Harlan plays percussion. Yep. Uh, thoughts on Bitcoin? Got nothing against it. I don't love it for, I wouldn't gamble with it unless you got the money to gamble with it. Yeah. I think it's a high-risk investment, but if you can afford to make the investment, go for it. We have some of it. We don't have a lot of it, but we have some of it. Right. So Diversify. <laughs> fill all your buckets. Right. I also really just have... I don't believe in get rich quick. I just don't believe in it. I, I think that your work ethic is much more scalable than anything that could potentially blow up overnight. Um, so, silver. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute backwards mm -hmm. um so hide and chat for a minute here's the deal i've been blessed to have myriad conversations over the last several months with 
financial planners, fiduciaries, um, people of that nature. And I've talked with people who manage, you know, wealth for people who live in um, real nice double wides to people who have a have several private jets. Okay, so a wide spectrum of wealth. And across that socioeconomic spectrum, from four different people in four different regions of the country, I've gotten pretty much the same answers on several different things. And so Old Testament in the mouths of two or three is a thing established, right? So when you starting, when you hear the same things from different people, that adds credibility to it. So here's the deal. Long and short, and I'm just gonna break this down, Barney, for you real quick. Number one, get out of debt now. Now. Not tomorrow, not next week, right now. Like you right. just absolutely, and I'm saying this to the point of, should I buy beans and rice or pay, my, pay off my Amex? Pay off your Amex. Get out of debt now. Because I think there's very much so this thought process in the prepper community. Well, when the world melts, nobody's going to be coming to take my, you know, repo my house because I didn't pay my mortgage. We don't know that. And we don't know what the world's going to look like when it melts. Okay. And again, go look at the Great Depression. The people that did not have debt and could lay their hands on physical commodities weathered the storm quite well. The people that were saddled with debt and could not lay their hands on physical commodities did not fare well at all. So get out of debt. That's number one. Number two, own land. You should absolutely own land. Year over year, land appreciates. Decade over decade, millennia over millennia. They're not making any more of it. Own land. There's only more people to take up more of it. Right. So. Now, that all that being said, you should be invested in commodities, meaning like hard commodities, like food, uh, silver, gold, lead, iron, so mm -hmm. forth and so on. 15%-ish of your wealth should be in silver or gold as a, as a way to retain wealth. Not to build it, but to maintain it, to retain wealth in financial chaos. A lot of people, a lot of people that have a lot of money to play with are pulling money out of the market and putting it into liquid assets like cash so that when the world melts in their estimation in the next 18 to 24 months, they can buy up investments pennies on the dollar. Okay, that when the world melts, the vast majority of these startups and companies and bad investments go away, and then everything else that's a good investment will be devalued because the market crashes. Be dirt cheap. And then they can buy it up with their liquid assets. Yeah, the money will be worth less, but if you do the cost comparison, you can still get a great deal. So, and that's if you're into the market, if you're willing to play the market. But once it bottoms, it can only go up. But preserving wealth is done through land and uh, physical wealth. Okay. And then from there, yeah, bugs. Um, play, I, honestly, if you have the money, I don't think it's a bad thing to be in the market, but I just, it's all about what's your risk index? What are you right. comfortable with? Um, for us, it's like maybe 25% in, 75% out, meaning that if we have a dollar to gamble, I'll put 25 cents of it in the market and 75 cents into maintaining wealth. Right. I just, I don't even care if it grows. I just want it to stay here. Um, if I get the same growth rate as inflation or even a little bit better, I'm cool with it. But other than that, man. I think the point, like you don't want, you don't want anything, like all of your anything in one place. Yep. Like if. That's a great point. It's, it's diversification. If, if the stock market crashes, you don't want all your funds tied up in the stock market. If. But even in the stock market, you don't want to own just one stock no. or a couple of stocks. You want right. to own 30 to 50 different. Right. They, stocks and especially ones that you're not emotionally attached to right. i work in the coal industry so i only buy coal well good not only do you lose your job if coal tanks but all your money's gone too mm -hmm. that's a bad idea right. so getting back to silver yeah yeah but i will say this 
and I've had this, I've made this argument to all four financial people that I've spoke with thus far, and three of the four kind of had an aha moment. I hadn't thought about that. And it's this. If, Hi. if, Hi. put them, put yourself away. Uh, if you are predicating your thought process with silver on the idea that we're all gonna buy, sell, and trade with gold eagle or silver eagles and silver dimes after the balloon goes up, listen, how many people are actually into prepping? It's basically zero. The average American has less than $400 in their bank account, okay? So they're not buying silver eagles. So the idea that we're all gonna buy, sell, and trade with silver, I think that only works in a microcosm if you have a team of people where you're all investing in silver. And then that's all if, if we all agree that, hey man, four chickens is one silver eagle. Copy that. Well, and that's not to say that like the silver that you're buying for what, $1,200 an ounce? Or is that gold? No. No, yeah, it's silver is, yeah, that's gold. Oh. Silver is like 20-ish right now, 18 an ounce, something oh, like that. Okay. Well, but go ahead. Not to say that whatever you're buying your silver or gold for, that it's going to be worth that. It's not. Right. Like, I was telling my grandma, because she was asking me the same thing, and I'm like, Grandma, it may end up that, you know, a new hand plow uh -huh. is going to cost you an ounce of silver. Like, or two ounces of silver. Whereas when you bought it, you could have bought six hand plows yep. with it. So, um, but a bucket of rice will always be worth something. So cool. Coffee is currency. Amen. <laughs> Especially if you want to hang out around here. Um, cool. I'm sleepy. Food is power. Amen, it is. brother. Yep. It's 8 30, man. Crazy to see the differences in regional laws. Never in a million years entertained Northeast. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I know. Rice and Breen's been preaching forever. Mm hmm. One of the preppers from Puerto Rico sold his silver at a loss. Yep. Together we are unstoppable. Chow and tools. Amen. Yep. That's what people, I mean, you got to think what people are going to do. Amen. Need. Foots. And. Shalom. Shalom, Aaron Martin. Yeah. Spices. Yep. That's a. Shalom, Scout. Yeah, I think we got to go too. I got to go. I was just going to do a quick live stream while you were talking to Grandma. And... Oh, yeah. They're always just supposed to be quick. And then, well, then like and 300 then... people showed up. And we had like peak 300 people. So I was like, okay, so much for quick. Oh, well, you should stock some. I'll stock silver, you stock coffee. And let's see, now we, now we got something going here. Uh -huh. Oh, trying to grind on debt and land right now. Yeah, amen. NWA is a good place to be. Thank you, brother. NWA. Just a quick stream. <laughs> Whatever, Richard. Shut up, man. <laughs> Shalom, y'all. Thank you guys for being here. Bless you guys. Um, we're going to bed. Hope everything's all right, Gabriel. Guns and Diesel. Shalom, brother. We're about to go to sleep. Um, good night, y'all. Well, we love y'all back, so mm -hmm. um, 